topic that you, me, everybody need to be aware of. And most importantly, how are we going to counter this situation, right? Legally, okay, everything that we do here, it's all legal. Okay, So if some of you are still thinking, oh, is this applicable to you? Is it only for a US citizen? Well, all right, this is what you can find from Google, okay, which I already helped you to find all the information. If you are from the US, you are super lucky, okay, because this will not be applicable to you because if you are from the US and if you are going to pass away, which eventually everybody will, right? Your exemption amount is $10 million, which is totally okay because most of the time, if the $10 million, that is a lot of people's goal, right? However, if you are not from the US, all right, if you're not from the US, which is like you and me, most of you guys, right? How many of you are not non-US citizen, non-US? This is you, can you type me in the chat? You are non-US just like me. I'm Singaporean, okay? So what's going to happen is, can you see that if we are non-US citizen, you will be subject to a maximum tax rate, a maximum tax rate of 40%, and the exemption is only $60,000. So that means as long as your portfolio inside your brokerage account is more than 60K, this masterclass will be highly, highly relevant to you because anything more than 60K, you are going to be subjected by the US government. Okay, They are going to tax you. Okay? So that is why super, super important and, and that's why it's relevant for almost everyone here. Okay, Unless you are the super lucky person who is actually US citizen. Right? How many of you here are US? If you are from the US, can you type US in the chat? Yeah, I want to see who is the lucky person that you have $10 million <laughs> uh, maximum line to, to hit. All right? So if you can hit 10 million, fantastic. Okay. So, okay, I can see no, none of you guys are from the US. So it's applicable to you, me, and everyone. Can everybody type everyone in the, in the chat? Okay. Everyone, make sure you pay attention to tonight's masterclass because the amount of tax that you will be subjected to pay is between. 18% to a maximum of 40%. And if you start with a smaller portfolio, let's say you just slightly above 60K, maybe the amount is not going to be significant yet. But we also know that as we grow and compound our wealth, we will definitely firstly hit the $60,000 threshold. And on top of that, we are going to grow bigger and bigger from that, right? So that means as your portfolio grows bigger, this tax rate, the the actual quantum that you are going to get taxed will get bigger and bigger. And that is why, right, it's so, so important that we know how to circumvent this situation. And in case you're still wondering, what is this tax about? Basically, it's called the estate tax, right? And estate tax are basically taxed by the US government when you pass away, right, you have certain assets located in the US, right? Let's say you buy uh, US stocks, ETFs, or, or cash holding into some of the brokerage account is considered assets situated inside US. And because of that, the US government have the right, or right, they have the legal right to tax you. And then after that, the remaining amount will be then be able to pass down back to your family and your, and your uh, children, right? So this is what uh, estate tax is about. And the bigger you grow your portfolio, this amount will be bigger and bigger, right? So what is being subjected to estate tax? It's anything from your US stocks, your US ETFs, and your US auctions, all right? How many of you have this, all right? Have this, if you have this inside your portfolio, type me in the chat. Are you going to share this recording? Okay, Eileen, yes, I will be recording this. And after that, tomorrow, I will also be uploading this onto my YouTube channel. But I want you to make sure stay all the way to the end, all right? Because today, all right, you're going to have a lot of Q and A session. And tomorrow, if you watch it, then it's only just a recording. Okay, that's how you can able to ask questions and how I'm going to able to answer you immediately, right? So yeah, I can see so many of you have it, right? I have it too. And on top of that, right, the cash you put inside your brokerage account, it's also potentially going to be taxed as well especially if your brokerage account is actually US-based. So later on, I'm going to show you some of the brokerage account is actually literally US-based. So even though you're not investing anything inside, as long as you part your cash inside, you are also going to get taxed. <laughs> and um, some of the funds, maybe you buy money market funds through certain brokerage account, 
you can also be subjected to tax. And that's why uh, if you have just over $60,000 inside your brokerage account from Interactive Broker, which is pure US based, right? So if you put your cash inside Interactive Broker, if you put it under uh, money market funds, you are going to get tax, right? And let's say you put your stocks, ETFs inside Weibo, you are going to get tax as well because you are buying US uh, assets, right? Moomoo is the same thing. Uh, Tiger Broker is the same thing. And maybe some of you back then use TD Ameritrade, right? I also use TD Ameritrade, but eventually I migrated over to Weibo and Moomoo, right? But if you are still using TD Ameritrade, you are going to get tax because they it's exactly the same as Interactive Broker. It's a US-based brokerage platform, US-based brokerage company, and even cash inside, you are not spared, right? So can we split the amount? Ah, so actually, I kind of think of this is a very good question. I personally think that it's not, it's not going to work that way because it's the asset, right? So I think they're going to add up everything together and count you in. It doesn't make sense for you to open like six brokerage accounts and then each one of them has 60K. I don't think the US government is going to uh, let you play tricks like that. So just to play safe, I just want you to take everything into totality and uh, whatever amount that you have added all together, you just want to make sure you won't get taxed, all right? So that is the the safe uh, the safe way, all right? So that is why, uh, yeah, Charles Schwab also, right? Because right now TD Ameritrade is under Charles Schwab and Charles Schwab is actually a US-based company, right? So... Okay, endow us. When you buy through endow us, the funds, it's not. Okay, later on, I will share with you why. Okay, but that is actually not the best solution. The best solution is what I'm going to go through with you tonight. Right? So whichever amount that you hold it into this brokerage account, you are affected. And the bigger your account grow, definitely the absolute quantum will be bigger and bigger. So for myself, if you have been following me, you know that initially I have most of my amount inside Moomoo Broker, right? However, since the beginning of the year, I have started to transition majority of my asset from Moomoo to Weibo, right? Because at that time, they had a super attractive campaign uh, that they are able to give away free NVIDIA shares. And that's why I migrated quite a lot of my assets and I sold off a lot of my individual stocks from Mumu and I sold it off. And then after that, I migrated to a Weibo account and I just start my ETF portfolio from Weibo, right, alone. So right now, I still have individual stocks, right? So my individual stocks in Mumu, it's about $200,000. But my ETF, right, my ETF portfolio is the one that it's really way more significant as compared to my Mumu account, which has about $800,000. So in total, right, it's already a million dollar portfolio. So that is why I felt that this issue, right, especially as your portfolio compound bigger and bigger, it will become even more alarming, right? Because nobody likes to be taxed, especially when you eventually, maybe some of you already have a million dollar portfolio, right? You don't want to get, get taxed like up to 40% because a million dollar out of 40%, that is 400K. And a 400K, uh, doesn't have to be just profit. They will tax you the absolute amount. It's not that, oh, I made 400K profit, then they only tax me on the 400K profit. They are going to tax you the absolute quantum. Whatever amount that you have inside your brokerage account, they take it as a totality. So that's why you really want to make sure you be careful. Uh, can everybody type BC in the chat? <laughs> be careful and make sure you start applying the strategies that I'm going to share with you tonight. And I'm going to go through three different strategies, okay? Can everybody type three in the chat, three? Hasty trade, I think it's from the US. Yeah, so if you, if you have access over there, you are definitely going to get tax as well, right? So anything I'm sure, you can always ask your best friend, okay, Google. <laughs> your Google can tell you whether is it a local broker, like, uh, like, 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 is it from the US or whatsoever, right? So that's why tonight, let's KO this tax boss together and find out what are the three ways to really circumvent this entire situation or at least, all right, alleviate the situation. <laughs> then we learn different ways. And most importantly, at the end of the day, you can see which one is the best suitable solution for you, right? And on top of that, later on, not just me, myself, I'm also going to invite a super expert who has been helping his clients to 
mitigate all these risks and manage their portfolio construction in a very, very safe way. Okay, later on, to invite this expert to come here to share some of his views and his insights as well. But that is later because before that, I want to make sure I cover whatever that I can cover first. Okay, so how many of you guys are ready? If you're ready to learn, can you type ready in the chat? Let's get ready. <laughs> Let's get KO. So KO strategy number one, all right? If you want to be 100% avoiding estate tax, there's one very simple strategy, right? That strategy is you just make sure your portfolio in the, is situated in the US is less than $60,000. Right, which I see quite a lot of uh, Singaporeans, they do that eventually, especially when they grow older, they kind of feel that maybe the US market is a little bit too volatile for them, or they just want to avoid right estate tax, right? So they kind of sold off all the US position or reduced to a huge, huge, uh, huge amount, and then they only have 60k and they come back and they invest heavily in the U uh in the Singapore stock market. Right? Because when you invest in the Singapore stock market, you are not going to get taxed. The, the, our government here is really fantastic. right? No capital gain tax, no dividend tax. That is awesome. right? However, I know this is not the best solution. right? Maybe some of you may be rolling your eyes right now, but you know, Chloe, I want to invest in the US right? because compared to Singapore, US do does offer a lot more opportunities, right? Many great international companies worldwide making money worldwide, right? While Singapore is pretty limited to just a, a small country, right? And um, Singapore, there's no options. If you continue to stay in the US, there are options as well, right? So if you're rolling your eyes, don't worry. That's why this is the first solution. Might not be met most ideal. I also do not recommend that unless you are really, really someone who wants to be like focusing back to investing in home-based uh, company stocks like Singapore eventually, right? But I know most of us here, we are still into the growth of the US and that's why not the best solution. And that's why let's go into number two. Can everybody type two in the chat? Okay, so number one, we quickly skip two because number two is actually super, super important. Now, what is the number two strategy, okay? which is actually to buy non-US asset. And what are some of the non-US assets that you can think of, right? Which are ETFs, right? Because when you buy non-US domicile ETF, you will not be subjected to US asset tax because these ETFs do not belong to the US category of assets. Right. So what is actually US? Uh, okay, before we introduce non-US domicile ETF and which exactly are the countries that you should be looking after, right? Looking for. Okay, let's take a look at just the US, right? Why so many people are interested in investing in the US? Because it's just a strong economy power. And because it's a strong economy power, the stock market will reflect, right? And for the past five years, the S&P 500 has gone up 90%. That's like 15% compounded year on year, right? That's super awesome. And this is just investing in something that's very simple, very basic, which is the SPY, right? SPY is one of the most popular ETF inside the US, right? It's US-based. And once you buy into SPY, you are literally buying the top 500 companies in the US. And these top 500 companies, you have your Apple, your Tesla, your NVIDIA, your Meta, everything is there, right? But the beautiful part about these top 500 companies, right? They are not just making money within the US, right? 40% of their revenue actually make globally. So when you invest in the US market, actually you are investing in the world economy because they make money globally. How many of you understand where I'm coming from? If you understand, right, can you type G in the chat? Okay, G stands for global. And that's why US is so attractive and it's so strong. It just keeps on growing because they make money everywhere, right? So... One of the best strategies that I always have been sharing, right? Just like just look at SP 500, right? It's so strong, so stable, and it grows over time. And not just for the past five years, if you take back time for the past 50 years, for the past 50 years, the compounded annual growth rate of SP is 10%. Now, Maybe the 10% may seem very little to you right now. Oh, Chloe, wow, only 10% per year doesn't seem to be significant. But if you stretch with a long period of time, this is where time 
with 10% can really start to compound, right? So how many of you have started to play around with this Arigato Financial Freedom Calculator that I put it up in my website? If you have like tried it before, type me in the chat, right? If you have not tried it, you have if this is the first time you've seen it, type new, okay? How many of you are new to this calculator? How many of you have actually tried it already, okay? Or some of you tried it before, ET, all right? Ivan, it's the first time for you. Okay, so now let me just quickly go and try it out for you guys, right? So that later on, uh, you can just scan this QR code. You just scan this QR code, uh, you will be able to go to this website. But basically, let me just demonstrate for you right now how you're going to use it, right? And I want to just show you the magic of compounding with just S&P 500, right? As simple as that. Let's say you start off your investment with $10,000 invested in S&P 500. And every single month, you just add in additional thousand, which I think it's relatively decent, right? In terms of the uh, the, the price, the affordability wise, every month, you make sure you save aside $1,000 and then initially just can k right? And the length of year, right? Imagine if you keep on compounding your return, not just... 10 years, not just 15 years. If you stretch your horizon to, let's say, 30 years, what would that be, right? And your expected rate of return, just use the past 50-year track record, which is 10%, right? So I'm just going to keep it like this. And then after that, let's calculate, okay? Let's calculate what is going to happen if you just compound 10% year on year for 30 years, okay? So after that, okay, once you click calculate, okay, you can see that the chart start to plot out. Right. I want you to ignore the green line first. Okay, I want you to just look at this left-hand side, right? The left-hand side is the S&P 500. And in, uh, remember, okay, I want you to look at the left-hand side. The initial contribution is $10,000. But over time, because you keep on adding $1,000, $1,000 every single month, so after 30 years, right? After 30 years, you will have contributed $372,000. But that is your capital. Because your capital keep on compounding 10% year on year, eventually, how much would you earn in terms of interest, right? You will have earned this amount. You will have earned 100, okay, sorry, $1.9 million. So eventually, your portfolio actually grow to $2.3 million. So 30 years down the road, just by starting with $10,000 investment and $1,000 every single month subsequently, you will have compounded to $2.3 million. Who think that this is actually pretty good? You think this, this is pretty good, right? Can you type S&P 500 in the chat? Right? As simple as just using the S&P 500, you are able to become a multi-millionaire, in fact, in just about 30 years' time, right? And of course, if you have a bigger amount, that's how you can compound and accelerate into a million-dollar portfolio much, much faster as well, right? So that's the magic of compounding. And if we go back to the slides, right? That's why so many people are super, super passionate about investing in the US because it just provides the kind of stability and a long-term track record that investors are looking for, right? But very importantly, you do need time. Can okay? everybody type LT? Okay, LT stands for long-term. So don't expect to be like one year, you become a million, millionaire, right? You do need time. But once you give yourself time, right? That's how your, your millions is, is going to come to you, right? That's why I always share to my ETF community, to my students, just be patient and keep on buying great ETFs over time, right? And S&P 500 is definitely one of them. Of course, there are other great ETFs that can accelerate the return faster, but everybody can start with S&P 500, right? So now, that's how your $2.3 million actually come from. Now, very importantly, Ed, if you decide to stick to this plan, which is a fantastic plan, right? But because it's US domicile, right? Eventually, let's say 30 years down the road, you do have $2.3 million inside your account, you are going to get taxed. And imagine the US government is going to tax you up to 40%. That means almost $800,000 is going to go to the US government, not go to your family, not go to your loved one, right? And this is why this is super important. And I want you to remember there's another way to own S&P 500 through another country. Okay, guys, can you make a guess which country is this? Which country is this? Based on this uh, beautiful picture, it's very empty. It has nothing. 
it's only very scenic. <laughs> wow, fantastic. Okay, many of you are already know, already know this country. Exactly, it is Ireland. And do you know that if you buy an ETF that is Ireland domicile, that means it's not located inside the US, but located inside Ireland, you are insulating yourself from tax because the US government right now have no rights to charge you for estate tax, right? And that means you no longer need to be confining to your to $60,000 portfolio, right? And on top of that, one more advantage of investing in Irish domicile ETF is they also provide a better dividend tax as compared to US tax rate. So some of you might be aware of if you invest in US stocks or ETF, when they pay you dividend, you will be taxed 30% automatically, right? But if you invest in Irish domicile ETF, your tax for in terms of dividend reduced by 50%, right? Right now, you only pay 15% in terms of dividend tax rather than 30%. So in this way, you also save more money as well, right? So what is that ETF that you can look into if you want to buy into Irish domicile ETF? And the ticker symbol is CSPX. Can everybody type CSPX in the chat? Right? Because it's super important. You want to make sure you remember this. All right. So CSPX, as you can see, basically tracks the S&P 500. Can you see? The fund seeks to track the performance of the index composed of the 500 large cap US company, which is the S&P 500. So it's the, exactly the same thing, but... This time, the domicile country is Ireland. And because of that, you are spared from the estate tax issue, right? And you can also see that when you plot the chart between S&P 500, which is SPY, versus CSPX, firstly, the chart looks very similar because they are basically tracking the index, the same thing. However, if you notice, right, actually the CSPX, which is the purple line, the purple line does slightly better as compared to SPY. Why? Because for the purple line, which is the Irish domicile ETF, right? Not only, right? Not only it's you are uh, you are not subjected to any tax, right? The use of income here, it's accumulating, right? What does accumulating mean? Is remember S and P five hundred does pay you some dividend, okay? A little bit, but still there's some dividend and whenever this dividend is being received this cspx will automatically reinvest for you so that you are accumulating more cspx over time and because you accumulate more cspx that's how when the stock price increase you are going to grow faster as compared to s p 500 which is spy if you buy spy right the 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 ETF is not going to have this accumulating effect. So the dividend is being distributed to you. But then your dividend is going to firstly get 15% uh, 30% tax. And because you're buying less right now, your stock price performance over time will be less as compared to an accumulating ETF. Right? So if you understand the importance of buying an accumulating ETF, can you type A in the chat? Right? So this is the power of CSPS. Okay, but once again, there's always both sides of the coin, right? So the good thing about CSP is it's fantastic. You have tax. You also have slightly better return over time. But, okay, the problem is you have more limited liquidity, right? Because when it's an Irish domicile ETF, firstly, the, the trading volume is definitely not going to be as great as the US market, okay? And secondly, right? The capital requirement is also quite high, right? Because the per share is 634 USD as compared to S&P 500, it's slightly, at a slightly lower range, okay? So, but still, uh, you still need a larger capital. And even though CSPX allows options as well, okay? This one has options, right? But it's not US option, it's European option, okay? So the rules is also slightly different, but the capital that you want, you, if you want to do options on the Euro European stock market, it's still a lot, okay? So that is the, the, the issue with buying CSPX and or even consider doing options on it, right? And 
And that's why for myself, right, I, if you ask me, I would still prefer doing options on US market because the liquidity issue is a lot better, right? So much more liquid and you actually have also a lot better choice in terms of what kind of ETF. So recently, right, if you are inside inside my Arigato ETF Millionaire coaching community, I did share one of my uh, favorite, right, US domicile ETF. And by just doing ABOS, which is selling put options, right, in about 25 days, I made about 2.5%, right? And that is about 500 over dollars in terms of passive income. And because the stock market recently risen a little bit, in fact, if I want to close my option position, I'm already in profit of 28%, right? But once again, I'm not going to close my options position. I just want to let it, you know, wait until the last day of the expiry date. If I get the ETF, I'm happy. If I don't get it, I am also happy, right? Because I basically get free money, right? So that is the beauty of options as well, right? And um, another good thing about US stock options is because they have a lot more variety in terms of different type of ETF. So just the S&P 500 alone can have different type, different ETFs that you can do options on, right? So one of my students, ST, right? She did on this ETF that is also tracking the S&P 500, but with a much lower ticket price, right? The usual S&P 500 is 500 over dollars, but this one is $60 tracking the same thing. And because of that, she did option strategy on it. She made about annualized return 16%, but most importantly, and she collected her first passive income, right? So that is why the advantage of US is you can start options with a much smaller capital and you can also have a higher liquidity to continuously do options, right? That is an advantage. Uh, however, if you migrate to CSPX, you are very much limited by capital size. And on top of that, the liquidity issue will could be potentially a problem, right? So it's always balancing, okay? Can everybody have balance, okay? You want to make sure you balance both sides of the coin and see which one is the best for you, right? So um, now, very importantly is why am I so passionate about options is if you're following me, right? I do use this powerful option strategy called ABOS, right? Everybody, does anyone know what is ABOS? If you know, type ABOS in chat. If you don't know, just type new, okay? So using ABOS, right? For example, you can see from Shenting, right? She made about 16%. If you just do this, right, and you compound your return faster with options, okay, let's, I'm, I'm just going to use a very concept. Okay, some of you don't know. Okay, if you don't know, okay, later on, I will share with you some additional resources, but let's just assume that firstly, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then after that, right, I'm just going to give a very safe target of 15%, okay? And if you do options, which give you a 15% compounded year on year return, let me show you you are able to accelerate the entire process much, much faster. Okay, what do I mean? Okay, so just now, that was uh, 30 years, right? And then 10%, but right now, okay, I'm just going to increase the percentage from 10 to 15, uh, 15%, which is actually very doable using options. Okay, when you do that, let's see the difference uh, between buying S&P 500 versus doing options on S&P 500. Okay, so let's calculate. When you do that, right, guys, I want you to see this chart. The green line is the one with options and the blue line is the one without options. So in the end, what exactly is the difference? Huh? Can you see this? Can you see this? In 30 years time, firstly, if you continue to buy S&P 500, you are still going to become a millionaire, right? Which in this case, about $2.3 million. But... If you know how to increase your ROI, right, your return by another 5% to 15% year on year, can you see right now your same amount of money, instead of $2 million, right now it becomes $6 million. With this, using ABOS, literally you have 185% more in terms of your assets, right? So that's why I'm always very, very passionate about using this strategy in a very safe way. You want to make sure you always do options safely, right? And that's how you can potentially make a few million dollars more, right? So if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's okay, right? Right now, I'm going to share with you a resource that you can learn more about it, right? Basically, it's a free masterclass that I hold. Um, and you just go to this link, scan this QR code, 
go and join because inside there, I break down a lot more about this option strategy that I shared with you just now. But today is not about sharing about options. And that's why if you want to find out more, just go and scan this code and register for the free master class and take about two and a half hour. Okay, so make sure you set aside two and a half hour to learn. All right, how many of you have learned before? Okay, if you learn before, type me in the chat and you find it useful. Okay, can I clarify the CXPX is not subject? Ah, very good. It's not subject to SPEC tax because it's non-US based, right? It's Irish dollars out. So if you just want to clearly avoid estate tax, now let me give you a summary on this strategy number two, right? So strategy number two is UCSPX. You will not subject to estate tax, but it requires more capital and the options is also not as ideal. And second, uh, thirdly, very importantly, is because you're buying an ETF, obviously you can no longer do stock picks. So let's say if we're really bullish on certain companies like NVIDIA, you cannot, right? you just cannot buy individual stock because when you buy individual stock, which is a US company, it has to be a US, but it's a US asset, right? So that's why when you shift to this strategy, that means you can no longer own individual stocks. Anything that you still buy individual stocks, it's still subject to the US estate tax, which is more than $60,000, you will get taxed. And of course, one of the things is regulation is constantly changing. One of the things that Ireland is not taxing us today, maybe they will change eventually. Who knows, right? So that is why this could be one of the future risks that if the regulation changes, then whatever things that we are sharing today might not be useful in the end because the rules and regulation change, right? So. That is why, in my opinion, this tail strategy is great, but there is certain limitation. So you want to make sure you still balance your objective. For myself, currently, I do not buy any CXPX or any Irish domicile ETF yet because I still want to do stock options in the US, right? In fact, I still own certain of the individual stocks listed in the US as well. So this strategy might not be the most useful if you still want to have this kind of uh, flexibility and freedom to do options and whatsoever, okay? So if you understand this, can you type two in the chat, All right? So I want to present to you different solutions and in the end, you decide for yourself which one is the best for you, All right? So that is number two. Now, let's go on to number three, right? Number three is you can actually choose to buy insurance for your portfolio. Now, when I'm talking about buying insurance, I'm not talking about buying options insurance, okay? That is a different thing, right? This one, I'm literally directly referring to buying insurance, okay? Because when you pass away, right, that's when the estate tax can get triggered, right? So there are certain insurance products that's available that the insurance will help to pay off your estate tax on your behalf. And because of that, Regardless how much, how big is your estate tax amount, it's going to be covered by the insurance. And this is actually one of the approach that I'm personally actually using it right now just to cover my ground, right? Because relatively, I'm still young. I still want to invest in the US for a long period of time and I still want to do options. And that's why instead of shifting my assets into DXPX or other the Irish domicile ETF, I am still buying insurance to protect my portfolio in case anything happened to me. Then my family can basically use the insurance payout to pay to the US government for the estate tax, right? Now, of course, for myself, I am not the best person when it comes to insurance, right? So that's why today I'm also inviting an expert, right, who has actually over seven years of industry experience in this field and he has also helped a lot of his clients especially in this area to protect their portfolio right so that's why later on we will also have some q a sessions i love all the questions that you are coming in right make sure continue to ask all those fantastic questions but before that okay let me just invite all right our expert guest today and his name is sean okay can everybody type hi sean in the chat Right, and Sean is actually from Prudential and he's also from Derek Coe's organization. So today I want to especially invite him to come and share 
what are different ways that you can consider protecting your portfolio? And in the end, if you do want Sean and the team to guide you through this entire process of doing more proper financial planning in terms of your legacy, your portfolio, then they will also share with you how can get started as well. But before that, I want to officially introduce Sean. And thank you so much, Sean. Okay, guys, can we see Sean already? Hi, Sean. Hey, hi, Chloe. Hi, good to see you. Thanks so much for uh, taking your time to be here. And everybody is so excited. Yes, hi, Sean. And I'm Sean. Hey, hi. <laughs> Yes. It's, so yeah. uh, maybe maybe before we get started, can you share with us a little bit more about your background first? And mm -hmm. uh, like you have over seven years experience and how has it been for you, you know, in this industry? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the introduction, uh, Chloe. And thanks for the warm welcome on the, the chat. Yeah. A lot of people are saying hi to me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm actually in industry for about seven years. I've also been branched as well. And I think uh, for myself, I actually been investing even in the US market for more than decades, right? Even when I started in army time, I started investing. Yeah, and I think right now, uh, we can see that there's a growing trend of people investing. But even right now, I do meet a lot of people that don't really know about this estate tax. Yeah, so I think the, the topic that you're covering it actually can cover a lot of, uh, probably a lot of gaps that people have. Yeah, and um, yeah, so of course, uh, through the years, I met a lot of clients and even families, right? And through all this financial planning, right, actually we managed to find a lot of strategies to help them mitigate this, uh, this risk like, that they have. Mm. I see. So is it a growing trend that more and more people, because like you say, a lot of people are still not aware of asset tax, right? I was I only came to be aware of this like this year. People say I totally didn't know about that. So do you see it's a growing trend or there's still a huge gap? Actually, still huge gap there. Mm. Say, I think probably more than fifty percent of my clients don't really know about that. Still, yeah. so they are quite shocked when you told them that. Hey, do you know that you will get that? Right, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I see. So for yourself, right, like for uh, what kind of advice that you usually give to clients, uh, especially in this kind of asset planning, right? Like I know there are different type of insurance. Are you able to share with us? What type of insurance are available out there and what are the pros and cons? Because at the end of the day, there's no one size fit all strategy. What are the pros and cons for different type of insurance so that our audience here can also be more aware which one is more suitable for them? Sure. Uh, okay, let me just share my screen and then uh, yeah, I actually prepared some slides or so. Yeah. Okay, okay, awesome. Yeah, you wow, can... your slides very nice. Eh? <laughs> you can see the screen, right? <laughs> yes. Present. Okay. Yeah, so full screen now. Okay, I think uh, to probably address some of the challenges that uh, we commonly see our clients face, right, is that, um, okay, like for example, in Singapore, right, actually there's a lot of, uh, people actually living longer these days. In fact, yeah. we just took over Japan for the longest lifespan. Yeah, so that also comes with a new concern uh, or challenge, right, where we're actually outliving the retirement savings. And also uh, healthcare is getting more and more expensive these days. Yeah, so a lot of planning in this and actually one of the risks that uh probably one of the most common risks these days. Yeah. So I think more relevant to yours is actually more the investment risk as well as portfolio diversification. Yeah, your yeah, market is getting very volatile and I'm um, not going to comment too much about Donald Trump winning election, but yeah, we, we can see the market is moving quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, for business owner, right, or even people that actually um they are more they have a lot of passive income methods, right? Um, uh, they also have to look into business succession, succession planning because yeah. When they transfer the ownership to uh, a management to their, let's say, even their loved ones, right? They may potentially face law issue, even liquidity issues or so. Mm. Yeah. So in legacy planning, it's always been uh, one of the concerns that is to protect the wealth for future generations. Lah. Yeah, because I think we as Asians, we, we tend to want to give leave something for family behind. So yeah. And then uh, relevant to what you what you mentioned just now is the estate planning. Yeah, because 40% uh, tax, right? Actually, is a lot. Yeah. Very significant. Right. Like losses, they don't share, but then the gains, they, they take. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So actually to, to address this, right, um, there are actually a few ways we can do. Yeah. So actually, uh, more into insurance coverage, right? Um, I think the most popular one is actually covering for term insurance. Mm. Yeah. So term insurance is probably the most straightforward one when you get a uh, high coverage for a small price. Yeah. So it's straightforward, no frills, just pure protection. Very straightforward. Mm. Yeah, so you can actually choose the number of years that you want uh, your term to be. So usually my clients will look into like the golden years where they have still have kids, you know, the where uh, liability is high, they have to protect you know, the family members. 
Yeah, of course, the downside about this is that there's no payout if you do outlive the term. Yeah, so there's no money back, lah, in other words. Okay, and cost actually increases as you age. Yeah, so depending on the way that the, the insurance works, right, some of them is actually locked in the premium uh, throughout the whole duration. Yeah, some of them is on renewal basis. So it really depends on the kind that you actually got it. Yeah, and then of course, uh, because you don't get anything back, there's no cash value. Yeah, so it's a pure, you know, just really straightforward, just want to get coverage in. Okay. Yeah, so so for example, let's say I currently actually I'm, I'm, I bought a term insurance for myself as well. And I think I bought until like 65 years old. So the problem is then what if after 65, which I think I'm going to outlive 65. So what's going to happen, right? Is that what you mean? Yes, that's right. Mm. Yeah, right. And of course, to address this issue, right? Uh, another very popular one is actually whole life. Yeah, so whole life, the, the name by itself, right? It means that it will cover for your whole life. Yeah, so my clients like to call this the Pao Jia plan. Yeah, basically, it's uh, everyone will get the money. It's just whether you get to enjoy it, your family member get to enjoy it, or maybe even your grandkids get to enjoy it. Yeah, so you actually last try your whole entire life. Yeah, and then uh, you, you can think it's like a, <clears throat> like a mini savings piggy bank where part of your premium, right, actually will go into building your cash value. Yeah, and this cash value, you can actually borrow money from it. You can also withdraw a bit of cash if you need it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I've met a lot of clients that uh, <clears throat> you know, when at, at very uh very times where they actually need some cash, right? They actually look into this uh, whole life insurance to actually withdraw out. Okay, of course, the downside about this, right, is that uh there is a longer commitment required. Yeah, because when you put a portion to your cash value, right? Um, if you do surrender early or you stop paying the premium, right, you might eventually lose some of the, the cash value. Yeah, and of course. If you compare term insurance and whole life, right? Uh, whole life typically has a higher upfront cost. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And last of all, right? Actually, the cash value grow, but because the main purpose of this is ultimately still a protection. Yeah. So you cannot be like uh, let's say your investment, pure investments or pure savings. Yeah, because they are their objective is spread into different uh, So you mean like usually life plan includes so-called a lump sum payment until the end of your life, then maybe like your legacy, which your children, they can still so-called succeed uh, whatever amount because after we pass away at the end of our life, then this amount will be able to give up to our loved one. But at the same time, uh, there's also certain insurance protection. Is that what I mean? Like let's say get into illness, then uh, the, the plan will help to cover the cost of the medical bills. Um, yeah, not exactly medical, but for let's say like death, critical illness, the they will just pay a one lump sum. Okay, critical illness. Got it, got it. Okay. So okay. it can also be used to cover estate tax. Yes, correct. Okay, got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, and for I think the thing about uh, insurance is that let's say, for example, if I have a sum assured of hundred thousand, right? Uh, and then when the let's say your loved one actually get a payout, right? It's not taxable. Lah. They won't oh actually you receive hundred K, then I'm gonna Minus forty percent from that for for inherited tax or in this, yeah. At least not in Singapore, of course. Mm, yeah. yeah, for in Singapore, no. Yeah. Okay. So last option actually, this is uh something that's very very popular. Uh, I think most of us probably heard of the the term universal life. So it's like a jumbo whole life insurance, but something that's very popular now is called index i uh universal life or IUL. Okay. Yeah. So the purpose of this right is they actually provide high coverage and. Uh, the good thing about it is that there is growth that's linked to market performance. Yeah. So mm. uh, there you can potentially make um pretty similar to your investment. Yeah. But of course, I'll share the downside later. Yeah. Okay. Right. And there's also downside protection where there's a 0% credit floor rate. Okay. What do you mean by the 0% credit floor rate? Right. So let's say, example, if you look at, um, okay, let's say, Okay, touch wood lah. Next year is not a bad year. Yeah, overall market, right? And then your index actually goes down by 12%. So negative 12%, right? Mm. So this downside protection, right, will just keep you, it will just keep you at 0%. So you don't gain anything, you don't lose anything on that year. Okay, okay so let's say uh this year the the portfolio is 100k, right? And then yeah. let's say next year, because of the market go down, let's say 10%, by right, if we are investing in the stock market. 100k drop 10% will be only left with 90k, right? But right. in your in what you say, what you're saying is the 100k will not change. It's still 100k. Right. Your account value will not drop negative. Oh, okay. okay. Interesting. All yeah. right. 
how right. does that even work? Like how 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 do you, how do insurance people actually able to do that? Yeah. Okay, so of course, um, okay, what, what they do right, is that there is actually a course of maintaining the IUL, uh, in the uni index universal life. So that will be, uh, they will eat into your potential returns. So of course, when you make money, right, they will actually, uh, basically, there's a percentage they will actually take from there. Yeah, but when you lose money, right, in order to actually cap it, right, actually, they, they won't, like, let's say, example, is at 0%, right, the market drops, right, they don't charge you any further. Yeah, so mm. you just... Yeah, so that's like a layer of buffer to actually uh okay. down times lah. Right? I see. So yeah. just now you were saying that let's say the market return, which for example S and P five hundred, because this mm -hmm. this you index universal life is packed to the index. So when the index grow, which historically S and P five hundred grows ten percent year on year, right? So this insurance, let's say I buy it, it will also grow about ten percent year on year. But then there's of course certain fees. Like what you say, it's going to charge a charge that fees to cover should the market go down, my portfolio will still be intact. It will not go down. Is that what you mean? Yes, that's right. Okay, yeah. understand. Uh, that's a very good summary, actually. <laughs> 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 Lay, layman, layman. That's correct. Yeah, but of course, because uh, it's a bit more complicated as compared to buying a term insurance. I want 1 million coverage. This is my premium. Yeah, so if I index, there's, uh, because it's linked to you know, the, the, the market, right? So you really have to look into market performance. Then there's uh, things like participation rate. Uh, it seems a bit confusing, but of course, just this uh, subject alone can take quite a bit of time. Yeah, but just to give you the option, and I think if, uh, you know, if uh, anyone wants to find out more, right, we're very happy to share more in detail also. Mm. Okay, but yeah. I don't understand this part, like, like not exactly a set and forget uh, policy. Why, why is it so? Okay. Yeah, because there's a lot of uh, different options. Like, for example, right, uh, you can actually choose your sum assured. That means you can adjust, like, how much death benefit, how much goes to the investment. It's actually adjustable. And, yeah, correct. Right? And, of course, you have a good financial consultant. They'll actually advise you. Of course, the ultimate decision is yours. Yeah, but you can kind of uh, customize it a bit to suit your different financial needs. Nah. Yeah, maybe at the start, you know, when you, know, you don't have any kids, then you feel like, oh, okay, I want to chong more. I want to get more money, right? So you can put a lot into investment. Yeah. Mm. But eventually when you have uh you have kids and then you want to uh at least you know have a bit higher coverage, right? You can also adjust their value over there. So so there's also insurance coverage on it. Mm, correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. Mm. So okay. what so so is that the so the downside of this IUL is uh it has caps on the growth and higher costs. Yeah, higher fees. Actually, it's higher fees. That's why the, the, the growth, actually, there's no cap. Uh, the, the, the caps on growth, right? Meaning that example, let's say if the market performs 10%, right? Yeah, so you may not get the exact same as 10%. It'll be slightly lower compared to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but as long as the market go up, actually, these will go up together. Is that what you right. mean? Just that the, 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 the fees, because of certain fees, a so-called, instead of 10%, maybe it's, I don't know how many percent, like it's, 8%, 7%, is that what you mean? Yeah, that's right. Okay, interesting, right? So usually what, uh, like, do you have any uh, case study or like, like how would you advise client which one to choose depending on the person? Yeah, yeah. So actually this, this is a very good question. And I would say that actually it really depends on the current financial situation and of course the financial goals of a client. Yeah. So let's say if you're typically starting out, right? Let's say you're very young, you know, you just started working and then you want to get into the investment journey. Uh, probably what you can start off is with probably term insurance or even a whole life insurance. Yeah, because uh, they are definitely more straightforward than uh, as compared to an index universal life. Yeah, but of course, when you reach a certain level, you know, you have, uh, you're probably looking for higher potential growth rates, right? And then probably you can look into index universal life or so. So it's a step-by-step -step journey. Of course, not nothing wrong if you want to start with the index universal life or so. Yeah, but I think ultimately it's really getting to meet the each individual and then we customize uh, what's more suitable for them or so. Mm. Okay, so one of the questions I have is because we are talking about in the end, right, estate tax, let's say mm -hmm. um, my portfolio, a million dollar, yeah. can be subject to up to 40% tax. So mm -hmm. how is the insurance plan going to help me? Yeah, okay. So like example, right? Um. Okay, let's say... For example, you want to leave one million to, to your uh whoever it is your loved ones. Yeah. 
Right. So um, let's say on average, your $1 million portfolio right, can cost, uh, can, let's say if any dividend or anything that you're getting out from there, let's just say you get, get about four to four to 6000 per per year. So you can actually push this into like, let's say a term insurance or a, uh, let's say a whole life insurance, the premiums. Yeah, but you're guaranteed probably, let's say a $1 million coverage, right? So in fact, that actually frees out a lot of your cash flow. Really. Yeah, so touch wood, if anything happens to you, right, you still get 60% for your family because 40% tax minus away, whatever you have. But a 1 million coverage, right, from the, ter uh, from the term insurance will still be given out to the family as well. Yeah, mm. right. Yeah, so in other words, right, you are you are very clear about how much car uh, how much can be left behind for your for your loved ones as well. And it's not okay. a subject to tax and tax can change so along the way. Yeah, so what, what uh, you're saying is because we are still investing into the, the U.S. assets. So mm -hmm. that part, the U.S. government will still texting, texting this portfolio or whatever amount that we have inside the brokerage. But uh, so that 40% so-called, it's still happening to be given away. But because of the insurance coverage, uh, when let's say I pass on, the insurance coverage will kick in. And that's how that, million dollar let's say i buy a million dollar coverage the million dollar will be able to pass it down to my family so in a yeah. way it kind of like net off the the uh the impact due to asset tax is that what you mean yeah that's right okay i see interesting yeah. of course um, these are not the only strategies like i mean there's a lot more like uh setting up trust that's one of the things right? and then uh of course proper portfolio diversification um yeah, correct. So there's a lot of different strategies and um yeah, uh, and again it really depends on the case to case basis. So, sure. Oh yeah, so, sorry, just now I couldn't hear you for a while. You're talking about setting up trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 So oh. yeah, some people actually set up trust, right? To actually uh prevent like a or actually to manage the estate tax, right? Yeah, but uh we are actually not the the best person to advise you. Yeah, but uh, we actually do work with a lot of partners with, uh, you know, like law firms or uh, companies that set up trust as well. Yeah, mm. so actually we can work hand in hand and then from there we can come up with a, optimally a solution for you for uh, to, to actually manage this uh, estate tax as well. Okay, so uh, I think one of our audience, Chiwa, he's also asking, um, is it possible to, uh, maybe you can unshare your screen, then you can elaborate a little bit more on how to use trust in this case, but I do understand trust is a lot more complicated and in fact, more costly to set up. Is that correct? Or how does that go? Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's a very good question, actually. Um, yeah, so actually, for example, right, um, when you set up a trust, right, you can help you manage and distribute your assets according to your wishes. Yeah, uh, actually, usually it's more uh, crucial for people who have more complex uh, estate plans or so. Yeah, so actually, some people ask, actually, is trust really needed for uh, for someone, right? It actually really depends on their individual situation. So, uh, but again, it's a very, very broad topic. Yeah, and uh, it really depends on each individual, a case-to-case -case basis. Yeah, so I'm not really the right person to dive deep into this. Yeah, but of course, if you're doing, uh, if you are looking for expert advice, right, on real writing or even trust services, right? Yeah, uh, we rec recommend to speak to one of our certified estate planners or so, so they'll be able to guide you through uh, how trust and insurance can work together. Mm. Okay, I see. Another yeah. question from Ben is, if portfolio keeps growing, right, uh, how to structure the term insurance to keep pace with the 40% tax? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so actually insurance, right, right now we have um, uh, what we call like an incremental sum assured. Yeah. So a common thing is that just now, uh, previously also people was always thought that let's say 1 million coverage right now can seem a lot, but mm. because of inflation, 1 million may not be as high, yeah. right? Yeah, so we have uh, some of course, uh, some of the term insurance, right? They have incremental sum insured. So it can be, let's say, increasing a 5% uh, sum insured per year. Uh, and then of course, another important thing is always to review your policies. Yeah, I mean, not every, I mean, actually every year we ideal. Not probably every three months or so. Yeah. So when we review, then we see uh if your portfolio is growing at a really, really exponential rate, right? Then of course, uh we might have to meet each other more often. Nah. Okay. So it's always advisable to review like investing, like we always review our portfolio yeah. annually, right? At least once a year. So you also encourage people to do so for insurance as well. Is that what you mean? Yeah, correct. 
Yeah, in fact, it's a good thing because it means that probably, you know, uh, your standard of living has increased by quite a bit. That's why it's a good time to actually review. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, I see. So, um, can you share with us a little bit more on, okay, in case, uh, okay. So, uh, another question, if I reduce my holding to less than 60K before I pass on, then do, uh, will she be still subject to estate tax? I think this question I can answer. So if you <laughs> reduce your US holdings, right, to less than 60K, then before you pass on, then obviously because you're less than 60K, you will not be subject to the estate tax. However, very importantly is uh, you just really don't know when, right? Because for example, like, like as I'm at my age, why do I want to like consider this topic is because I just don't know when things can happen, right? Like as much as I know I'm very young, I I can potentially still live very long. But in case anything happened, I just want to make sure I always protect my portfolio. And that's why I choose to actually buy insurance in case things happen, then my family will still be able to enjoy the kind of uh, assets that they are supposed to enjoy. So, uh, Cynthia, that is the best scenario. You know exactly when you want to do it. But sometimes life doesn't ha happen like that. So it's always good to have a peace of mind, in my opinion. Right. Is there any example? Okay. Uh, Iris is asking, is there any example where you can uh, you help your clients to plan their portfolio? Yeah, that's a great question. And if, in fact, she actually, I don't know if she saw my slide, uh, but that's actually my next slide. I have a real life case study. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So let me just share. So I think, um, in fact, yeah, you can actually address uh, just now, I think, um, Ben's question. It's probably a good case study to share. So, okay. Yeah. Let me just share my screen now. Yeah? Okay, so this is a real life situation. Uh, one of the my first few clients that I met uh in a road show many years back. Okay, so this was uh okay, of course the date we changed a bit, like, and then the name, uh, not exactly his his name as well. Yeah, so like for example, right, uh, Mr. Go is age 50, he has a portfolio of five uh, hundred thousand in US equities. So, and then maybe share with him about the estate plan, uh estate tax, right? Um, up to 40%. Yeah, so of course, after above the 60,000. Um, just take note that the progressive tax rate do apply. Right? So this case study, we're just going to make it very simple. We'll just use it on the max tax rate of uh, 50, 40%. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so currently, progressive right, tax rate means that because remember, it's about 18 to 40%. So it depends on your portfolio size. So uh, Sean just want to give you the so-called the bear case scenario. Uh, so so that every if you protect your bear case, your optimal case scenario is better, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so how do you calculate like the potential at, uh, tax liability for Mr. Go, right? So if, like example, if his portfolio value is 500,000, we minus away the 60,000 exemption. So his taxable amount, right, is 440,000. Okay, so again, assuming at 40%, right, he will be due estate tax of US 176,000. Mm. Yeah, and then, uh, and that's assuming no growth and he passed on, um, you know, at age 50, but again, it's not likely. Yeah, so assuming if his portfolio will continue growing at 8% for the next 20 years, right? So the potential tax liability that he has, right? From his original 500,000 portfolio value, right? Compounding 8%, he will have gotten 2.3 million portfolio yeah. value. Yeah, then minus away the 60,000 exemption, right? So his taxable amount is a lot more. It's 2.27 million. Yeah, so it based on a 40% tax rate, right? Actually, you can see even though the uh, estate tax, right, is the same percentage, it's a lot more because of the compound yeah. returns or so. It's almost a million right now. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And no point, I mean, pay this money and someone not own government. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, yeah. So, how he can address this, right? Um, Like I mentioned, actually, he can get a term insurance. Yeah. And then this, uh, we use this, uh, this the actual premiums itself, right? So, of course, the AGA figure. Yeah. Um. So, if you use a death, Sum assured, right, of 1.5 uh, million SGD. His annual premiums will be, now of course, assuming covering to age 75. Yeah, his annual premiums will be of 3.6 thousand per year. And the mm -hmm. total premiums they pay, right, till 75 is 113,000. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, in the event of a premature death before 75, right, actually the payout could cover his potential liabilities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, if you take the, uh, the 908, USD, right? And then you times into SGD, right? Actually, the, the payout that you get to 1.5 million SGD, right? Yeah, so that's that's how you can address the potential. Ah, okay. Yeah, right. And at, the, at least 2.3 million signs, right? Actually, 
actually it's very easy to, to achieve a 3.6 thousand per year worth of uh, dividends or growth rate. Uh. Mm. Yeah. So in a way that in exchange for a potential 900k US dollar payout, right, mm. which translate to amount about like 1.3 to 1.5 million SGD, right? So in 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 exchange of risking that 1.5 million dollar, right now, uh, for Mr. Go, he actually bought a term insurance and uh premium is 3.6k per year. And in total, right, if he pay until 75, that is about 113k. So 113k in exchange for a 1.5 million dollar uh tax payout. Is that what you mean? Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. I see. Uh, all right. Uh, I think there's a good question from Ben also, since we're talking about this. So at the estate tax of 40%, right, is it payable upfront in cash uh, or before the entire portfolio is released to the surviving loved ones? Yeah. Okay. For tax issue, right, probably not the best person to advise us. So, yeah. Uh, correct. Um, I definitely would recommend to speak to the tax consultant or so. Yeah, so again, same thing. We also work with a lot of tax, uh, tax consultants that can actually advise you better for this as well. Yeah, because uh, there's a lot of other assets that we can include inside the your your US assets. So like for example, even US properties, yeah. So oh, yeah, US property is also counted because as long as you hold assets, uh, in the US and even US business as well. So anything that is situated within the US, it's subjected to estate tax. All right, mm -hmm. so just not and not just stocks. Uh, in case you eventually diversify into other things, then uh, you also need to be paying attention to that. All right. Uh, okay. So that is for uh one of the uh Mr. Go. Right. A any other addi additional things that you uh you want to share? Okay. So far, or uh, any questions from the floor? Feel free to ask since we have uh we have this special time with Sean. Yeah. Okay. So in the meantime, okay, uh, I also want to continue to ask some of the questions to Sean as well, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, just now you also illustrated on um, one of the client as Mr. Go. And mm -hmm. um, for the trust thing, I think you said that it's best to actually have a uh, discussion with uh, proper people who have the trust background and all this. Okay, I think that question also addressed already. So uh, for this is, uh, since everybody is, different right like uh yeah. what kind of advice would you give to audience here right um if you just summarize in in a few sentences what would that be okay um like to summarize everything that we discussed is it yeah yeah okay i think the important thing is that actually while we are trying to build our portfolio right to ensure like financial freedom or anything right, right we can't really choose when exactly we leave the world huh? Yeah, so actually the worst gift they can give to our family, right, is actually the, you know, just nice market crash or anything, or even an estate tax, right? Yeah, I think the portfolio is down by 40%. Yeah, so, and we cannot control exactly when we're going to leave the world. Yeah, so actually what we can do, we, we try to manage or so. Lah. Yeah, so we shouldn't just, I mean, you take it as you shouldn't die for free or so. Lah. Yeah, and then, or worse, the money has to go to subject, uh, subject to estate tax or so. Yeah, yeah. right. So, I think it's always good to plan early, right? Yeah. Just like uh, in case anything happen, you all, all want to make sure you have that peace of mind. Exactly. Yeah. And all the clients that I met, they, they, uh, you know, they, they really never expect like, let's say for example, if anything in your family, uh, they never expect things to happen. Yeah. But at least what you can do is at least have the foresight to plan ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, regarding Ben's question, okay. Even though tonight we do not have a tax expert, but it's okay. I found some answer from ChatGPT, okay? So, so which I think is quite useful. And it's always good that you can double check later, but this is what I found, okay? From, I asked ChatGPT the exact question that Ben asked. And uh, yeah, so basically it's upfront cash to the US government. And yeah, before uh, the disease, US situated assets, which is whatever things that we have covered so far, can be transferred, the estate tax liability must be paid in full first. So until the tax is paid, the US government generally can freeze your portfolio. And that is why uh, it's always good to, uh, once again, well, similar to <laughs> Sean said just now, planning ahead is so crucial, right? You want to make sure you have the necessary measures and the means to 
cover this uh, amount so that your your loved one uh, and and your family member are well taken care of, right? Should anything happen, yeah. So uh, for exact terms and conditions in terms of the tax, right? I think it's best to consult those tax experts. And I think Sean, they also have certain uh, contacts that they can uh, share with you if you uh, if you want to, right? Later on as well, all right? So any more additional questions from the floor, all right? If not, okay, I'm also very curious. So okay, if for people who are in the process of actually contemplating uh, what to do with their portfolio, what can I do? Yeah, I think um, again, the, it's a lot of case to case basis. So I think the best way you can do, right, is actually uh, I included a QR code that uh, probably you can scan just to you know, leave us a contact um, method. So at least I think from there, you know, you can look into their different cases and uh, we can have a quick chat with them to see what we can do for them. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So basically, it's a, a complimentary portfolio consultation. Where uh firstly, I think Sean and uh his team as well, because they, they work as a team, right? They can they can look into your situation in terms of what is the current portfolio size that you're having, right? Because depending on your portfolio size, the amount of insurance coverage is different as well, right? So for my for myself, I actually plan for a million dollar coverage because right now, at this time, it's a million dollar. But I think what Sean shared just now, it's it kind of trigger uh one insight that I did not think about is compounded year on year, right? Because when this million dollar continue to compound for the next 30 years, I think my current term insurance coverage is not going to be sufficient, right? So this is something that I did not think about, which I think the conversation that we had just now was very insightful for me. So that's why the best uh, way for you to fully have a better understanding of how you should be planning your portfolio protection ahead. I think Sean and the team, they will be able to better advise you. All you need to do is to scan this QR code, uh, get in touch with them, and they can give you a more, most importantly, a third person perspective of how you should be managing your portfolio as well. And of course, there are different uh, plans available. Uh, you see which one is most useful for you, I think, at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. And in the same, at the same time, uh, okay, so this one, uh, not sure whether do I do I need to be off record, uh, but this one I also need to ask Sean. So what if uh, uh Rafael is asking, what if you have you no know, two names in your account and one of them pass on? So it's like joint account and one of them pass on. Will that mm. estate tax still be applicable to the person who passed away? Not insurance, right? Is it like uh in their brokerage? The just a brokerage, correct. Yeah, that's a very good question. <laughs> actually, yeah. from this, right? Okay, previously, I actually went to search for answer for this. Yeah. Um, You are still being subjected to estate tax, even mm. though it's a joint brokerage account. Uh, because back then, remember, I keep on finding, trying to find out solutions, right? I was thinking, hey, then if I open an account with, let's say, my mother, or I don't know, with my sister, will I be able to circumvent it? And the answer is no. <laughs> I will still be taxed. So, that's why uh, in the end, I say, forget it. Okay, I, I went to buy some insurance. Okay, so uh, another uh, question from Ben. So one way is to add new term insurance every few years to keep up with the growth of the portfolio. Is that correct? Yeah, that's another way they can do it. So, so it's either you do the incremental sum insurance or the other way is actually every time we review, whenever there's like huge growth, uh, some people that I met, actually their portfolio grows about 30% per annum. Yeah, so for people like that, right, uh, we actually to review more frequently also. Yeah, so not just about just purely about your investment portfolio to prevent uh, estate tax, but it's probably when you know we earn more uh cost of living or your standards of living also do increase. Yeah, so you probably look into getting high, a more expensive property. So even mortgage is also one of the things that you need to consider. Yeah, correct. So uh there are a few ways incremental sum insured or review the policy uh once at least uh, every one or two years if possible. Yeah, right. And, Okay, so uh, any more additional questions? All right, uh, I also want to ask, maybe some people or some people DM me is like, or oh, they submitted the form. Uh, when will you get in touch with them? Yeah, um, our team work very efficiently. La. So, so probably within the next few days, uh, yeah, we'll be able to drop you uh, either a, a call or a text. Yeah, then from there, we'll be able to arrange. Yeah, great. Uh, even my team right now, we are still in the office. Yeah, and then they are working very, very closely. <laughs> 
So don't be surprised if you receive a call, not from me, but my team. Yeah, but we work very closely and we are all very uh, very well versed in this uh, in this period. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So uh, in the meanwhile, I'm just going to paste the link uh, inside the Zoom chat as well. For those who cannot scan the QR code for some reason, the, the exact same link I also posted inside. And let me just open it up and uh, show you guys what are the information to fill up, all right? Should you want Sean and the team to actually go through this thought process with you to see how you can plan your legacy better as well and your portfolio protection, most importantly, against the estate tax. So uh, once you come into this link, basically it's a Google form, and uh, you want to make sure that you fill up the information in terms of your name, your email, and actually your mobile phone so that they can. Uh, mm -hmm. drop you a WhatsApp or even give you a quick call uh, before meeting you for uh, either on Zoom or either on face-to-face, -face, right? Depends on, on, on your preference as well, right? And then very importantly is uh, do let them know as well what is your estimated current size right now, right? Because based on this, they will also be able to see whether are you, uh, the, maybe you already have certain coverage. Is it enough? If it's not sufficient, then what would be a better choice for you, right? Or maybe your current size is, if you is less than $60,000, then the amount that you need to protect, right? Also don't need to be so much for now, right? So that's why depending on everybody, different people is different. You want to make sure, uh, go to this form first so that Sean and the team, right? They will be able to better advise you uh, when they are jumping on the call with you, right? So another uh, question is, do we decrease coverage if there is a bear market and then increase coverage during bull market? Okay. Um, okay, something I haven't mentioned yet is the insurability portion. Yeah, meaning that, um, okay, I think probably all of us are under the assumption that we'll always be healthy. Yeah, so when you actually increase and then you want to, so when you decrease and then you want to increase, right? Uh, there's the process of underwriting that you have to go through again. Yeah, so common things that will actually trigger, let's say things like loading, exclusion, or even rejection of uh, insurance, right? Is uh, probably like high blood pressure as well as uh, diabetes. Yeah, and in Singapore alone, that is very, very common. Yeah, so I think, uh, uh, yeah, it's very unlikely that they will decrease unless there are changes in, major changes in the lifestyle, right? Yeah, and then because of inflation, right? People generally they only increase, they don't go down. And, yeah. Mm, yeah. Right. And I think uh, uh firstly, I think it's a very good question because the market does fluctuate, especially mm. in the short term. But Javier, if you still remember like compounded year on your return for the past 50 years, like just SP 500 is 10 percent right? So that also includes bear market as well. So regardless whether it's a bear market or bull market, in the long run the US market goes up, right? So, and in the end, it's about 10% year on year across the 50 year period. So, especially when you are thinking about buying insurance for your portfolio, you are also investing for the long run, right? Because you are going to invest for the long run, it makes sense for your insurance to be aligned with your investment timeline, right? So if your investment timeline is 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, then your insurance plan should pack towards that. Right. And if you are investing in the long run, actually the market is going to go up in the long run. So uh don't think about oh, should I decrease my coverage during the bear market? Because that only lasts for a short while. But it's the long run, the compounded return that is going to be very, very huge. Right. And that's when your estate tax can be subjected to even more because as your portfolio grows bigger. Right. And I think one of the things uh I remember just now, uh Sean talked about the IUL, is it? Index Universal Life, right? Mm. One good thing that I think is quite attractive, it's um, if the market does go down, your portfolio is not going to go down together. So it's so-called like, in a way, like Buffett never lose money, right? Because there is just no downside to how much your portfolio is going to go down because it's uh, you're basically having the 0% flow rate, right? So that is something that, you might want to consider, right? Especially if you want to protect your portfolio. And the meanwhile, as the market grow, it can also grow. It grows together with the market. It packed towards the index. But of course, there are certain fees so that to cover the downside, right? So I think the best person to talk to will be Sean and uh, their team as well, right? So any more additional questions from, uh, from the rest, right? 
If not, right, how many of you felt that you learned a lot from tonight's session, right? The three strategies, whichever that you think that it's most useful for you, all right? If you, most importantly, as you want to make sure it suits your own objective, right? So for myself, currently, like I said, I do not buy into the Irish Thomas South ETF yet because I still want to make sure I have the liquidity of the US stock options. It can help me to compound my portfolio faster. But in the meanwhile, I don't know what can happen. So that's why I buy my insurance in case things happen, my family and my loved one will still be protected. So that is my current strategy. And as I continue to age, my strategy might change over time. But as for now, I can only share with you what is best for me. So very importantly, as you want to understand what is the best for yourself, and if you are not too sure, I think it's also good to consult um, like Sean and the team so that they can also give you better opinions because that they have worked with many different clients to help them to protect their portfolio as well, right? So I'm so glad that it's useful. Uh, is there any text up? Okay, so Shirlin, very good question. So when you buy through Endow Us, right, there is no tax as well because Endow Us is basically Irish domicile as well. Okay, so the funds that you're going to buy through Endow Us is also Irish domicile. So when you buy through Endow Us, it's pretty much like you're buying CSPX. It's almost the same thing, all right? So very good, okay? How many, how, how many other people also feel that it's useful? If it's useful, can you type useful in the chat, okay? So uh, maybe before we wrap up, okay, uh, Sean, are you able to unshare your screen and take a photo together with you? Damn. And uh, yeah, fantastic. Okay, I'm so happy that so many of you find it useful. Okay, let me just take a photo, everybody together. And three, two. Okay, hold on. Uh. Let me let, make, make, make. I want to make sure I smile happily first. Okay, so three, two, one. Awesome. Okay, thank you so much, Sean. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, and uh, thanks glad that you guys enjoy it to a lot. And tomorrow I will be uploading this recording onto the YouTube channel as well. So feel free to rewatch it. And if you actually, I think this topic is relevant to almost everyone. So if you have friends or families are actually heavily invested in the US and they don't know exactly what to do, or they are not even aware that they will be subjected to asset tax, make sure you also share this uh, YouTube channel link to them later on so that they can be more informed, right? Then they will be able to make better decisions for themselves as well for their legacy planning, all right? So thank you, everybody. Once again, I will see you guys in my next sharing. And for those who have not come for my free two-hour masterclass, make sure you also come because there will be, uh, I will be covering a lot more strategies, all right? Especially for those who are not aware of options, right? So uh, join my masterclass over here. Just scan this QR code. And yeah, you're going to learn a lot more about investing, especially through ETF and how you can use ETF to combine with the ABOS option strategy to increase your return in a very safe way. And this is also the exact strategy that Warren Buffett, he himself uses as well. So whatever things I'm sharing with you here, it's really, really practiced by Buffett. I want to make sure you do the right thing. So all you need to do is scan this QR code and uh, go and learn and have fun. And most importantly, start taking the right form of action towards your own financial freedom, All right? So thank you very much, everybody, and have a great, great night, and I'll see you in my next sharing. Arigatou gozaimasu! Bye-bye! See you guys! Good night! Thank you!